today I need to clean. That's the agenda for today. Clean, 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 clean. Finish the two hours of my audiobook and then sit down and read. But cleaning is on the agenda first. whole time I was thinking that I had one more day left but I don't today's the last day um, I finish today <laughs> so yeah don't ask here he hates me <laughs> good that's my lap <laughs> I did not realize how loud my music was. Shit. This must surely be the explanation for the view frequently articulated by conservative intellectuals and commentators that there was no overt racism in the policies of one nation. The government, they explained, views human rights as an inseparable part of Australia's overall foreign policy approach, both because the treatment of human beings is a matter of concern to Australians and because promoting and protecting human rights underpins Australia's broad security and economic interests. Or was there a deeper problem at work? Did the minister think that Indigenous property rights were not really human rights at all? Or did Indigenous Australians not qualify for them? Black labour was skilled as well as cheap. The older men took on the responsibility of teaching the young ones all they needed to know to become valuable stock workers. It was the distinctive skills of Aboriginal workers which made it possible to run sheep. The pioneer of stations around the Gulf of Carpentaria came from the point of 1884. Presuming that, I don't know what the pioneers should have done without the blacks, but I can't be beat at looking after horses and cattle. Aboriginal women, or the house chins, as they were called, carried out much of the domestic labour on the sheep and cattle stations right across North Australia. They drew water from wells to nearby rivers for the garden and the household. Many white children were cared for by Aboriginal nursemaids. Like male workers, the women were unpaid even though they often worked very long hours. Even though the station owners admitted that their black servants did work, they would have to pay a white woman 15 shillings or one pound a week. I believe that it was time for Australia to come face to face with the past to cast off the invasion of women. The contemporary society could cope with the truth and find it bracing and challenging rather than threatening institutions and infrastructure, building towns and cities, and nurturing one of the world's most impressive democracies.
Hello, I just got out of the barth. The <laughs> what did I say? Like that barth. <laughs> um, and I got to the forbidden scene. Peach scene, I was like, this is fine. <sighs> I am so freakishly aware of the fact that he has a foot fetish. Like, it's just so in my face. But I don't know what it is, but I like just don't want to read about how sexy and soft his feet are. And the fact that you like to suck his toes. Like, that's not something that like I'm interested in you know it's just one of those things that kind of keeps coming up at me now Elio cries and I'm like okay he's crying he's having a whinge that's I, I get it you know no one's ever shown you that type of devotion or love he's just horny it's not love guy um <laughs> so he starts crying and I'm like that's fine but then something that really threw a curveball at me made me go um, he licks all of his eye eyeball eyelids, not eyeballs. Fuck, that's a whole different thing. He licked all of his eyelids. I stopped reading at that point and was like, I gotta get out of this bath because that's weird as shit. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say something else and I forgot. Oh, he keeps going back and forth, back and forth, and not to say that he's a hoe, but he's being a hoe. Um, not liking that at all. You know, um, I think. My mindset of the movie is the same as it is in this book. It's definitely like a coming of age story, in my opinion. It's not a love story. I don't watch the Call Me By Your Name, the movie, and be like, it's gonna end well. In fact, I was content with the ending. I was happy that they didn't end up together, spoilers. And honestly, I hope that it's the same. I think it is the same in this book. But the fact that there's a second book now to this, where they like meet up again later on, I find uncomfortable i don't i don't like that um i want to prefer like i just want to say like this is an age gap kind of story and i personally don't like age gaps like at all i'm not into the younger younger person especially because in this one he's 17 and in australia 17 is underage for me and what i was raised on it ain't it he literally went out with um fucking Marcia again and they went to the movies and it's like okay yeah right like and it, it, he this line kind of bugs me he's like I didn't even think to hide from Oliver what I was doing with Marcia it was like butchers don't compete with bakers and I'm like oh. you can't have your cake and eat it too you can't have your cake and your meat as well <laughs> Relationships are frustrating. I hate them. <laughs> this is why I'm single. And so we went and got found him and he's sitting on a rock. Oh, Elio is, such be is being such a hypocrite. Because he's like, sometimes I spent hours all by yourself. He nodded. I never knew. I thought. I knew what you thought. The news couldn't have made me happier. It had obviously been shadowing everything between us. I decided to not press the matter. So Elliot thought that he was going out fucking bitches, right? And now that he finds out he's not fucking bitches, he's like, oh, thank fuck. And it's like, dude, you're fucking another bitch. So, like, why are you butthurt by him sleeping with other people? Like, hello? Hypocritical. Children. Can you not think of your dick for like one second, please? Oh. They literally were having like a cute sentimental moment where it like was making me feel emotional. I had to make it inappropriate. I'm getting frustrated, but like, I'm not in a like mad I hate this book kind of way. In like a I love this book, but you're frustrating me kind of character person way. Because I don't know if any of you care but I'm the type of person who likes books with shitty main characters um I like a shit person written well I literally as they're describing things they're saying like one word sentences and I'm literally like having like a mental flashback to all of the things that they've done together to this before this point before they got together and like I think that's just so rich in setting you know the it's just ugh so atmospheric and like there's just the setting is so beautiful 
Um, oh, I just love the way Elio thinks sometimes. Like, oh, shit hits, my guy. Like, I'm like sitting here like, I want you to be with him. But I also don't like it's so I'm so conflicted and I think that it's done on purpose like we're supposed to feel he because he feels conflicted he wants to be with him and he loves the feeling of being with him at the time and then afterwards it's just so shame like it's just oh. it's like it's hitting me it's hitting me in a particular way that in the movie I didn't feel so yeah thought I'd share Feels like I've spent this whole week by myself. I pretty much have. Like, a good chunk of this week I've been by myself. And I am so fucking bored. I'll do a dramatic reading while I wait for my water and dumplings to boil. <clears throat> How do you pronounce words? <laughs> Around 7 pm on a Wednesday evening, I'm gonna have alcohol. Yes. I need to open this first. Oh! Some of the things he says is beautiful, and some of the things he says make me really uncomfortable. That was an uncomfortable one. I don't want to know that he smells like Matsya does when they fucking sweat. Because, like, sweating is a thing, and saltiness is also a thing. I just uncomfortable. Okay, I'm gonna do this quick because my battery just died as I finished the last chapter and Buckles is ready for bed. So I'm um, quickly give you the rundown. Can you move over, dude? You sat right where I was sitting. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> he's so done and ready for bed. Oh, you're really hot, guy. Your feet are filthy. <sighs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> so I finished Call Me By Your Name and I like the ending of the movie better than the ending of the book but I cried so this just hits different I don't necessarily like it as much I just <laughs> this one it's like a jump forward to future when they're older and I don't like that I'm not gonna like spoil it yeah I'm just gonna say it like jumps forward to future when they're older you actually like they meet each up with each other and they have an encounter. I don't like that. I like the open-endedness of the movie when it just gets phone call and it's just, it's done. Like that's that. It's like, you know that he's never gonna see him again. And if he does, then he does. Like it's big whoop, like, you know. <sighs> that's just what I wanna say. It feels, it's just different. But I did cry in the ending of this one. Just because of that yearning, it like fucking hurts. Like, I felt that in my bones. It felt like time had, so much time had passed and the wounds were still there. Whereas in the movie, it like ended and it felt like he could heal from it, that he could move on from it. I'm gonna just go through stats and shit, boring shit. So like, yeah, okay, cool. I just wanted to say this reading rush has been one, very exciting and eye-opening for me and two, exhausting. I'm going to spend time editing and shit, but I think this was something that I needed to do. I need to just push past my fear and just get it over and done with. You know what I mean? Just just vlog. Just do things that I want to do and not worry about people judging me for it. So, with that said, I'm going to talk about how much I read today. So, I finished that audiobook, two hours worth of Why Weren't We Told?, and so that one ended up be only being around about 83 pages left. So, you know, we smashed that out. That's all good. Um, I ended up reading like half of the fucking book of Call Me By Your Name. I didn't realize that I had so much that I actually had to read during the day. So I read 127 pages of Call Me By Your Name. So now that that's all done and dusted, I can give you all of the stats. I completed every single challenge. 
I read seven books. Um, I realized that I didn't actually do the best at divvying up the books with the challenges. And I really wanted to read Why Weren't We Told, so I kind of just shoved it in there. Um, it didn't actually follow with any of the props, so I am going to double up with Call Me By Your Name being a place set outside of my continent as well as a movie adaptation. Because Coraline also fits as a movie adaptation, so, you know, I could shimmy things around and just make it fit and figure it out that way. You know, say that my first book I touched was Why Weren't We Told because that was the one that I wanted to read the most and shit like that. But I honestly just don't care. It's done now. I read seven books and... The each book fits into a prompt one way or another, except for the one, so I just, I don't care. Um, with those seven books, um, I'd like to say that I ended up reading 1,812 pages. Props to me. Uh, three of those were audiobooks, so some may say cheating. I say uh, time management. Because when you work a job that you are allowed to listen to any whatever you want for like two, three hours, I think why not utilize that time to enjoy some good books? Am I right or am I right? So if you want to be stingy, then technically I only read like what, four books? I mean, technically I only read three books. I don't care. A three books is good enough in my book. Like just physically reading books is something that takes time for me so the fact that I was able to smash this bad boy out even though it is a short book to read it so quickly I'm proud of myself and I'm gonna go to bed and leave you with that because this little guy here is ready to pass the fuck out like he just wants me to shut the fuck up and go to bed and my camera the battery's about to die so I'm going to sign off, I'm going to go to bed, good night, peace, love you, thank you for watching, and I do not judge you if you watch me at two times speed, because I watch everyone at two times speed, to be honest, unless I really, really like you. Alright, good night.